Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in to the Financial Investor Channel. My name is Brent and today we're going to be covering the Stock Market Weekly Recap for January 7th through the 11th, 2019. We're going to be covering the four major indexes, taking a look at the emerging markets, take a look at stock futures, you know, whether we're positive or negative, but that can all change here going into the weekend. Some negative news, some positive news. We're going to take a look at stocks here that have moved the most active after hours, you know, positively and negatively. We're going to look at the S&P 500 as a whole, see what stocks moved, where they moved, they, they gained, do they lose. The stock market as a whole was very positive this week. I posted over on my Instagram and on my Facebook already the changes for the week for the S&P, NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, and then my portfolio, all positive there across the week. And then we're going to go take a look at home builders, gold, silver, the dollar, and bonds. So we're going to try and make it about a 10, 15 minute video. I went ahead and did the intro here in person. Then I'm going to go ahead and flip the screen and share it with my, share the screen with you guys. So if you are brand new to the channel, hit the subscribe button below. And if you do like the video, hit the thumbs up. And then of course, if you have any comments, questions, go on over the video, stock market, personal finance, drop it in the comment section below. I will always read and reply to all you guys. And let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, and we are back. So the very first thing I like to check out is last week. So last week, the 31st of December 2018 to the 4th of January 2019, the S&P 500 gained 1.44%. The Dow Jones gained 1.59%. The NASDAQ gained 2.32%. And the Russell 2000 that had been slammed towards the late part of 2018 jumped up here 3.15%. Now my portfolio, I did my calculations a little bit after when the stock market had just wrapped up. So a couple of my funds had not completely finished. So my thrift savings plan, for example, had not fully calculated Friday's gain for the day. And my actual loss last week was around 0.5%. So I was still negative, but it was all due to Apple being my Debbie Downer there. Now looking at the S&P 500, S&P up 2.54% right in that range this week. Year to date, they are positive 3.57. I don't want to see the S&P 500 or any of the indexes run up as fast as they did back in 2018. Remember in the very first week or very first month of 2018, all the indexes were up 7%. Investors are jumping on board because the market was hot. 2017, the stock market gained 22%. 2018 started off 7% right off the bat. Investors are jumping on that train, trying to get those deals. And then on February 4th, I believe, the stock market began its downturn, losing more than 10% here, going into a correction. And then we held in that path about till somewhere around April, where we began our recovery again until August. And then after August, we just fell, fell, fell. So we don't want to see the markets boil up too fast. We want to pace ourselves you know, jog a little bit, walk a little bit, jog a little bit, walk a little bit, take a deep breath here. So I was expecting the markets to kind of pull back there on Friday. The Dow Jones, again, doing the exact same thing up flat on Friday, the S&P and the Dow Jones. Five-day change up 2.4%. Year to date up 2.87. The NASDAQ here is in second place up 3.45%. Nice run up four out of the five days positive there. Friday it's down slightly here, down 0.21%. This, I believe, maybe could have been Apple and Google. I know they were negative here on Friday. Year to date, they are up 5.07 in second place right now, right behind the Russell 2000. Now, the Russell 2000, this one was slammed in 2018. It had went down roughly 16% right in that range. So this one's moving a little bit quicker than the other indexes. That's completely fine. But again, we don't want to see too much of a run up early on in the year. Otherwise, we may get hammered again with another correction here. But I don't expect that with the Fed coming out. Powell saying, hey, we're going to be slowing down our rates until sometime after June, July. We may not even push out three. Or we may not even push out two. We may just end up pushing out one, and that won't be out until after June, July. So I put that over on my Facebook group here. Now, uh, emerging markets up 2.62% year to date. They are at 4.28. Stock futures are currently looking positive, but again, this can all change here on Saturday and Sunday, depending on any sort of news coming out with the government shutdown. If that gets reopened and they reopen the government, you could see stock futures go higher. If there's some sort of talk over a trade deal, or if China pushes out some article that we're not actually going for a trade deal, that could affect it negatively. You know, there's a lot of things out there that can make you go positive or negative right now. 
after hours screener. Some of our stocks here are most active in the after hours. We have Comcast, Apple, Intel, Cisco, General Electric. General Electric, General Electric did really well this week. I believe it moved up over a couple, 5% or so. I know it did really well. It's been performing really well lately. Still not a stock I'd buy and hold. Uh, Citigroup there up 0.28%. The downer here is HP down 0.52%. So not a whole lot of financials there. So we got some tech, but not a lot of financials. So Friday, we had a 50-50 market as we saw here on the S&P 500 and in the Dow Jones. Everything was flat. So S&P 500, we had S&P 500 as a whole was basically mixed. We had NVIDIA, we had Netflix, kind of our green, bright green stocks. We see General Motors down here up 7.05. What else we got? So that's some of our big Humana, uh, Humana there, uh, positive. So not a whole lot of bright ones here on Friday. Now, if we just look at the one-week performance, we can see Google, that effective, uh, that affected the NASDAQ there down 1.26. We saw Apple didn't quite climb as high on Friday. Apple still up nice, 2.72%. Amazon up 4.14. Even after the announcement that they're going to be splitting Jeff Bezos and his wife, you know, Amazon still up 4.14%. Facebook up 4.24%. A lot of groups here. Oil did really well this week. You can see all those oil and gas equipment and services all up over 5%. Financials are a bit mixed. JP Morgan, Wells Fargo were negative, whereas Bank of America, Citigroup were positive. Some of the sugary drinks, both Coca Cola and Pepsi, were negative here. Pepsi down over 2%. Coca Cola right around a half a point. Some of the utilities were mixed there. So Duke Energy negative, Southern Company positive there. So very nice, positive week. I, I see a lot of uh, me in the healthcare medical laboratories, lots of bright green up in there. Also here within the medical instruments. So again, healthcare moving very nice and positive. Technology, application software, semiconductors also moving very positive right now. So good looking movement here within the S&P 500. Financials up, point, uh, up 1% this week here. Very positive, just straight, steady growth throughout the week, and that's what we like to see. I don't like the huge run-ups here where we're just, you know, gain, 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 and then we had two days of a nice steady period. Actually, I like that. We did have a bit of a sell-off here towards Wednesday after hours, but I think next week is going to be exciting. We're going to go into some earnings, and that's going to be exciting. I know one of the financials are going beginning their earnings first. I forgot who's coming out, but I know JP Morgan and a few others are doing their earnings. So home builders up 5.14% this week. We have oil. Again, we already covered oil within here within the S&P 500, but we can see oil up this week 7.07%. The dollar went negative. So when the stock market is climbing, I like to see the neg the dollar go negative a little bit here. So we started the week here with the dollar around 96.12. We ended the week here now at 95.66. So negative dollar, positive stock market. That's what I like to see. Silver was negative this week by 0.61, but silver has been on a very nice gain these last few uh, trading days here. You can see back from right after December, uh, after Christmas here, we just saw silver begin to climb out of that $13.80 range all the way up now to $14.60. So it's just taking a bit of a breather. And I think that is completely normal for silver here. So silver, if it's falling back slightly, 0.61, that's completely normal. Gold hasn't had as much of a run up. So I still expect gold to move up higher slightly here. So the cost of gold right now per ounce of what, $120.10, it looks like there, $1,218, somewhere in that range. And we can see here positive for the week by point. 3% year to date up 0.45 bonds moving negative right now stock market as it moves higher investors already took their safe positions here on on within bonds you know when the market was very volatile back in October and August and December investors were already moving their funds around to kind of position their portfolios into some of these less risky investments such as bonds so it doesn't really move that much down 0.14 that's really not a whole that's not really bad year to date up 0.15 and then just bonds as a whole here uh, prime rate remains the same at 5.5 mortgage rates if you guys are out there getting mortgage rates i know i've been emailed and called several times 
that they've actually reduced their rates. So if you guys are out there trying to get a rate or trying to get a loan, now is a good time to get it. If you guys have been looking to refinance, looking to get a real estate, you know, a deal, uh, definitely go out there and look for some, some, uh, you know, look to make an offer and try and get that rate locked in. So that is all I wanted to cover as far as the S&P 500. Some of the news I saw, Zillow is now kind of listing their own home. So they've been kind of doing the uh, buying, fix and flip. I bought seven stocks here on Monday. So I posted all my stocks there on Monday, bought into my ABM, Cardinal Health, Consolidated Edison, General Mills, Kellogg's, Lowe's, Triple M and Southern Company. Uh, M1 Finance came out. So if you guys are looking to start your very own Roth IRA, your IRA, your retirement accounts, these are tax sheltered. So any of the cash that you put into it, you get your capital gains, your dividends. You don't have to worry about paying taxes right now. That's all done depending on whether you invest in IRA or Roth IRA later in life. So they're giving $25 right now if you fund it. $500 is all you need to get your own retirement account. I came out with my five stocks going next dividend next week. Really good engagement across the the YouTube community. I also posted this over on different dividend groups here that I follow. And we had China did really positive here. I believe this is Wednesday. Let's see, take a look at the ninth real quick. Yep, that was Wednesday. Hong Kong, very positive, up 2.27 there in the after hours. So I posted, I know a lot of investors are following IQ, BABA, JD.com. So a lot of investors are holding those positions. Bitcoin, I know a lot of investors out there that said, hey, you should invest in Bitcoin. This is going to double your money within the next year. And this is when Bitcoin was trading at 16, 19,000. This was not a solid investment. I like blockchain, but there's no way that I know how to value Bitcoin. So it's not something I understand. I am not going to invest in it. Marcus offers a 2.25% uh, high yield savings, 2.35% no penalty CD. I made a whole video covering it. And, you know, looks like it's reached out to some people. I see some engagement there. So that's really well. Uh, good. A lot of investors taking advantage of that. Oh, so here is the article about the Fed soft landing rarely seen in the wild. So they've actually kind of decided to kind of pump the brakes on increasing rates. And actually, we may not actually see a rate increase till after the second quarter. So after June and July. So the stock market, I believe, will continue to move higher. We may see a little bit of red. Uh, you know, we need to see some red, but I don't see a whole lot more volatility until June, July from the Fed. Now, we can still get some volatility here from trade deal. We can still get volatility here from the government shutdown. We can still get, you know, from any sort of investigation that's kind of going on. So there's definitely that. So S&P again, up around 2.51. Dow Jones, 2.37. The NASDAQ up 3.39. And then my portfolio this week went up 3.71%. So Apple and all my other portfolios, they're really helping me out there. I kind of beat the markets, but last week I didn't beat the markets at all. So this week, my big win of the week this week was I got a call from my property manager. I got a call last week that my duplex, one size of my duplex was completely rented out. It was renting for $780. I got a call this week that my three bedroom, one bath, that one got rented out. And that's rented out at $1,200. So once I do have my other uh, side of my duplex rented out, I should be gross uh, grossing, you know, rent around $2,700 of gross rent. So I don't have a mortgage currently on those properties. So I am going through a refinance and I should be able to recapture most of my funds that I've invested within my three bedroom, one bath. So that's going to get pulled out. And then I will be refinancing my other duplex. And then I'll be using that capital to go into my other two deals for 2019. So that is my big win of the week and I'm hoping to start that up. I wanna get one rental, another rental before uh, June, July, get that completely bought, rehabbed, back out and rented and then buy another by the end of 2019. So that is my plan and we shall see how that kind of works out. So that is it for this video, you guys. If you guys did enjoy the video, again, hit that thumbs up button below. Let me know in the comment section, what are you guys buying? What are you guys getting involved in? What is your one of the week? And of course, if you are brand new to the channel, a stock market investor, real estate investor, subscribe to the channel. I highly appreciate it. And thank you all for tuning in. I will see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.